You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. The car's just reversed up and literally just just unloaded on us, you get me? You nearly get hit? Yeah, I, I didn't get hit, but my brother did. Where did he get shot? Um, in, in his, like, in, kind of like in his ass, mm -hmm. to be honest. Some guys have come running in a pub, some um, balaclavas and that. A little fight's broken out, and then obviously they've chased my cousin up the road, and then his dad's followed him, and obviously while they're stabbing my little cousin on the road, the dad's trying to get him off. They've stabbed him as well. So they both was there lying dead and obviously the dad made it and my little cousin didn't. How did Jay-Z come about signing you then? Mm, basically after after I dropped Pure Coke Volume 1 and I done the fire in the booth, I was literally all everyone was talking about at that time. So they was looking over here for like a, an artist to sign and obviously my name was the name that kept coming up. So I went to jail in 2011, so three months after I signed the deal. I got nicked for the attempted murder. Yeah. I done like eight months on remand. The police chief inspector has messaged the Live Nation guy saying we don't want him to perform, literally. So it was just, it was just like the last straw, do you get me? So you were going to perform a Rita or a It, it Jay was Jay-Z day, yeah, like main stage. It's just disheartening. You get nicked for something you don't do. They stopping you there. They're stopping your shows constantly. Then you're getting nicked again. Then they're stopping wireless. It's just, it's disheartening. You're, yeah. you're out there grafting away, mm -hmm. trying to change your life around and obviously they're not letting, man. When we're on, today's guest, we've got rapper Keiko. How, How are you, brother? brother? Good to see you. You too, man. Thank you for having me, bro. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Yeah, uh, come on. How's life? Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah? Yeah. So, New album coming out soon? Yeah, yeah. Album out next month, February. First in a few years there? Yeah, it's been a minute still. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating story, brother. Yeah. One of the most up youngest upcoming rappers in Britain. Signed with Jay-Z. Yeah. Mega. Court case. Somebody get blasted, you get ripped in for it. Mm -hmm. Kind of changes things. Yeah. Um, you've worked with some fucking fascinating names. Your videos have been viewed over tens of millions of times. Yeah. You've got one of the biggest videos on Fire in the Booth. Yeah, nearly yeah. hitting Sweaty Million. Yeah, yeah. Talents there, bro. Thank you, brother, man. Um, you've also hurt your rocky moments along the way, but that's life, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, brother, I always go back to the start for my guests. Yeah. Where you grew up and how it all began. Um. Yeah, basically, I grew up in... Stonebridge, Northwest London. Um, it's quite a rough estate, proper bad place. Back in the 80s and 90s for sure. And yeah, that's where I grew up. Yeah, how was yeah. your schooling? Um, school's all right. I went to Stonebridge School on the estate and me and my brother got kicked out in primary school for fighting early. We had to go to a primary school on the other side of Stonebridge. Um, and then, yeah, I went to my local secondary school. It's just, they was, just, they was all shitholes, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. What did you get kicked out the first school for? Um, fighting, literally, yeah. Me and my little brother, we used to just beat up people, innit? Like, we had a lot of, like, growing up where we're from, we grew up in a black area. We was, like, the only kind of white kids, but my dad and my uncles kind of had a reputation on the estate, so we, and I had older cousins and older friends, so we was always known and... Like the little fuckers on the estate, yeah, if you go. Because you had mean. the back up with a bigger yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we was quite we was quite bad kids growing up. Were you from what's this separate back? Oh uh, yeah, I'm half Greek, half Irish. Yeah. 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 That's some mixture of that. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother's actually half Greek, half Scottish. We got different yes. dads in it. Yeah. So yeah. So but, how was your secondary school? Um secondary school was Copeland, Wembley. It was literally five minutes from Stonebridge. How was that? Still tough. Yeah, it was. It was just. It was, it's literally you're going to school with most of the kids from the estate mm -hmm. and other estates. That literally, was going there. Yeah. Yeah. I was. So when did you start writing songs? When did you start getting into um, rap? Probably like secondary school for sure. Just playing around. My mum bought us decks when we was kids. We had like the whole estate in the house mixing and that. So that kind of brought the music element into my life. I played football before, really, but. 
Yeah, that's where the music came from. Mm -hmm. So you were into rap very early though, because you get signed at age 17? Nah, nah, nah. I nah. started rapping late, bro. I, I got signed at 26. So where did the, where's the age 17? Is that when you first get charged? When you get, when you, when nah, did the shooting yeah. happen? Nah, the shooting was um at that time there. Yeah. I've been to jail a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. what was your first time? Uh, the first time I went to jail, I was, I think it was like 20, 21. Right. Yeah, so I've I done quite well, to be fair, mm -hmm. com compared to everyone else that was around me anyway. Mm -hmm. So how was ages, teenage years when you were growing up? Was it tough? Because I know I've read stories that there's been a lot of people trying to shoot you. Yeah, you know, yeah. Your obviously shot. growing up where, where I grew up is, is, is gangs and postcodes and all that kind of stuff. And obviously we just grew up in the thick of it. Well, we wouldn't even call it a gang. It's just your friends and families you grew up with, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So... Mm -hmm. But yeah, that it, it just it just came with the territory growing up where we came from. Your brother's been shot as well. Yeah, yeah. Why did he get shot? Um, that that was around twenty twenty one as well. I was standing right next to him. I remember we were standing on the side of the road. Obviously, we used to deal on that back in the day, do a little bit of this and that. So I followed him over the road to go and and hit a cell. So as we're waiting outside for his cell to come down, this Jags come flying down the road, isn't it? And but it's hit the speed bump at the bottom of the road, like boom. So me and him's looked at each other like, ooh, he's pissed. So we're not thinking nothing. So obviously we're just there, but the car's just reversed up and literally just just unloaded on us. You get me? The car was like, I don't know, from like that wall to that wall. Yeah, and so it was course. just like a car in between us, maybe. You nearly get hit. Yeah, I, I didn't get hit, but my brother did. Where did he get shot? Um, in in his like, in, kind of like in his ass, mm -hmm. to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, does that did that make you angry, or did it make you reevaluate your life at yeah, that time? That, I think that was probably made me like I was I was heading down a, a wrong path around that time already, but I think that literally just just times it by ten. Like after my brother got shot, there there weren't a time I didn't leave the house without having it with me or yeah yeah like everywhere I went I felt like I needed to have it with me all the time. Kind of killer, be killed mentality. Yeah, literally. Your young cousin was killed as well, I believe. Yeah, my little cousin was killed. Um, Luke, he got stabbed to death. Um, some it it wasn't even I didn't even know no one even knows why it wasn't even nothing to do with him or meant to be for him. But some guys have come running in a pub some um, balaclavas and that a little fight's broken out and then obviously they've chased my cousin up the road and then his dad's followed him and obviously while they're stabbing my little cousin on the road the dad's trying to get him off they've stabbed him as well so they both was there lying dead and obviously the dad made it and my little cousin didn't yeah no. that obviously affects you though like, no for sure you man. Know what i mean yeah. how old were you when all this was going on I was quite, I, that wasn't even, I don't know. I was I was quite old by then. By then we were already living that life and seen so much yeah. already. So it wasn't, obviously it hurt because it's my little cousin, but it wasn't nothing that we wasn't used to or, or didn't expect to happen, if you get what I mean. Yeah, so it kind of becomes a norm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sad that yeah. people, you think that life is normal, that yeah. seeing murders being shot at. But it's just yeah, acceptable. Yeah. For, for us, it is normal because we don't know no different. It's only till I get to come out of where I'm from and then you see how other people are living and, and how they look at these situations, then you start to realise it's not normal. Yeah. When you got to jail, was it 21 the first time you got to jail? Yeah, it was about 21, 22. Yeah. How long did you do? It was, it was nothing. I'd done a couple of weeks. I'd done it. Um, I got community service. The police bashed me up, done me for common assault. Um... And then I had community service, but where where I had community service, it was dangerous for me. So it was like, and, and I would have had to do it for like a whole year and a half. So it was like, go to jail for a couple months or go to somewhere where you're not safe and do it for a year. Like, I was just like, fuck it, I'll go to jail. Yeah. What yeah. jail did you go to? Um, Scrubs. Wormwood Scrubs. How was it getting in there as a young kid? All my pals were in there. It was like, oh, and I was going in there for a shit and a shave. It was say hello to everyone, yeah. see all your brethren, and then leave in it. Holiday camp. Yeah, yeah, literally yeah. around that time it was. Yeah. yeah. So when did you start? So you, you said you started the rap game late on. Yeah, I, we started. I started rapping like obviously I was, I was more or less known in the streets before I was known for music like. Mm -hmm. And then I think that's probably why music kind of did take off for me in that way because people already knew who I was and and the stuff that I was talking about people could certify. So 
it was that case. But um, I think we started around 2021, like not long after my brother got shot and we was really going at it. That was the round of times I started to rap because like I used to listen to rap. My friends started making music and I was just like a way for me to tell my yeah. my story, you know. How did Jay-Z come about signing you then? Mm, basically, after after I dropped Pure Cult Volume 1 and I'd done the fire in the booth, I was literally all everyone was talking about at that time. So they was looking over here for like a, an artist to sign and obviously my name was the name that kept coming up. Yeah. yeah. So how did that affect you then, being from a violent background, seeing all the misery that you've seen to then signing with one of the biggest record labels on the planet? Um, I, I guess at the time I didn't feel like it did affect me. I, I was still living it at that time, if you get what I'm saying. So mm. I, I don't know. I don't know if it did. It probably did affect me to an extent for sure, but I just didn't realise or understand what the effects that all of that stuff had on me, you know? Yeah. How was it with the fire on the booth? Did you realise how big that song would be? Nah, I just went in there and had fun, literally. I didn't think about it. I didn't prepare the lyrics or I went in there, made him run the beat and just spat whatever I, I liked. I just had mm. fun in there. And it still gets watched to this day. Yeah, yeah. It was a magical moment still. Yeah? Yeah. You still got a lot of love for that? Yeah, yeah, 100%. That's that's what everybody loves me for, mm. isn't it? When did the Jay-Z record label drop you? Um, I think that I got dropped in like 2013. So I went to jail in 2011 so three months after i signed the deal i got nicked for the attempted murder yeah. i done like eight months on remand while i was on remand uh the guy that signed me to sony because it was sony and rock nation both came together to do the venture so the guy that sold me to sign me to sony got fired and then they brought a new md in and it was just they was clearing everyone off the label so when i came out i wasn't even sure if i still had the deal or not but like Rock Nation was kind of behind me and they they took me back in there and was like, if you're not going to keep him, we'll take him somewhere else kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So obviously that happened, but the police were just on me nonstop. Yeah. Like, yeah. It must be mad though to get such a big deal to then, because some days it's a footballer get blasted at a train station. Yeah, he, then, weren't, he weren't even a real footballer. He was like, he was playing football. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he weren't a footballer, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, but um. Yeah, that, that situation was literally nothing to do with me. I wasn't even there. Obviously, and and I live on the area, and I'm I'm not I, where I live was like two minutes away from where it happened, which is why they was trying to place me there. And obviously, the other people that got nicked for it is people that I know, innit? Yeah. Yeah. So they just linked you to it anyway. Yeah. Did that not fucking piss you off though? It was like the worst thing. Sitting like I've been to jail many times, but when you're in jail for something you didn't do, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. And then especially when I had all of that stuff going on as well, like I had so much opportunities. I I could I possibly could have changed my whole life from within that eight months that I was sitting down in jail. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it was proper frustrating. Yeah, but again in the life of crime, all the shit that people do get away with, uh, it just so happens somebody gets nipped for the thing that it didn't do yeah, so it kind of balances itself nah, out yeah, no, for sure so yeah I can't be mad at when you were in for other man for 7-8 months were you writing songs then or were you thinking nah I weren't writing at all man did you I'm, give up nah not give up but I'm, my head's in the case and not not just even in the case where what the jail I'm in now I'm famous now I'm K-Coke now it's there's obviously there's street stuff going on so it's not as comfortable as just sitting down and writing lyrics and being that comfortable on the wing. The wing changes every day. Yeah. One day all your mates are on the wing, next day everyone that don't like you is on the wing. So it, it just changes, yeah. isn't it? So you're constantly sleeping with your nikes on yeah. or, or putting them on just before the door opens. How do people treat you in there knowing I, that? I get, everywhere I go, I get love, everywhere. The only, the only time I had problems is with people I directly have problems with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I had a problem in there. I, I, I got into an altercation with someone. I ended up getting sliced in my back and stuff. How was that? It's just a row. I didn't even know it happened. We had a fight, and then someone told me afterwards you're bleeding. I got patched up in the in the medical room, and they sent me to the block. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, you know, obviously, when you're thinking there, that's your golden ticket to get out, to yeah. change your life, to make yeah, waves, yeah. and show people that from your area and from your background that you can change and you've got talent yeah, yeah. but then were you constantly battling with yourself it's, it's, to be a bad boy yeah, yeah, to yeah. being a rapper because yeah. rap's got that persona of gangster rap yeah, yeah. you've kind of got to live up with that reputation for and sure yeah no. and I, I came in with that reputation yeah. so people are constantly 
they're gonna want to test your gangster. They get me. Like, yeah. They they hear things about you. People look at you in a certain way. So now they want to test your gangster to see if you're really about that. Yeah. So you have to be on your toes all the time. Yeah. yeah. How did the media treat you? Um, yeah. At first, like when I first started doing music, coming from where I come from, and because of my background, there wasn't no love. It's only till I started to do like the streets and the people put me in the position I was in. Not nothing else do you understand like yeah it was just the love from everybody else is why i got to where i got to mm-hmm. um and w- obviously when i when i got nicked it was everywhere literally like and then they'll pick the worstest pictures gun fingers here and gang sign there and yeah. rapper doing this and that yeah yeah so just sling mud everywhere paint, yeah literally paint a worse picture yeah literally yeah i mean it's diff- it's difficult though especially when you're trying to make changes but seeing the trauma and the pain that you've seen mm. it is difficult to then it's 50 50 what way you want to go mm. how was it then when you came out were you thinking i'm going to change my life or were you thinking i'm just going to go back to it was just everything was so hectic when i when i came out i just i wasn't i was still in a place of uncertainty where we weren't sure if the deal was going to carry on where the street stuff still really going on a lot it's just uh, you come back out and you hit the ground running you, there ain't no time to sit down and think and i and i didn't really have a lot of time to sit down and think in jail because I'm fighting battles in there too, do you get know what I'm yeah. saying? How, what, did nobody no ever take your side to say, look, you've got an opportunity here to make a few quid, change your life and do what you love no, to do? No, not really. They weren't, they weren't no blueprint at the time when, when I came up and I was doing that. They weren't a blueprint. They weren't like, follow this way and I'm, I'm, I'm in new territory. This has never happened before in England, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm literally learning for myself as I go, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. What happened then when you got out of jail? You started, you get dropped from your le- record label. No, nah, so you? they kept me for like, they kept me on for like two two years or just under two years. Um, things seemed to be going all right. I'd done the song with Rita, dropped that. The Maverick Sabre song, dropped that. It was going all right. Um, and then I had a birthday party. And um, Obviously, everyone's come to my birthday party, but the police originally heard that I was having a birthday party in this club in Soho, and they tried to shut it down. But we had a relationship with the owner, so he obviously he had the last say, and he was cool with us to go ahead with it. So he let us go ahead. Anyway, whatever's happened, um, there's been an altercation outside my party. Um, some I'm over across the road in a shop. Someone's come over, and they're like, your brother's over there fighting. So obviously I've run over to see what's happening because it's only friends and family that's here anyway. But as I've got there, just as I've got to the altercation, like a police officer just come out of nowhere and rugby tackled me to the floor. So obviously everyone's kicked off because they're all there for me and they're trying to nick me. Anyway, I've ended up getting out of it. Everyone's telling me to run. So I'm kind of jogging up the road and I'm kind of thinking like, why am I even running? I haven't done nothing wrong. But as I've looked back, they've just gassed me and they literally beat the fuck out of me like for ages Soho locked it off vans helicopters everything over nothing like battered me do you get me and then they done me for assault again this is the second time that that's happened to me the the police have beat me up and then done me for assault again Mm -hmm. so that was like kind of the last straw for the label and stuff it's like they they don't know what to do with me everyone's scared to to be around me everyone's weary like the police are on me banning every show can't perform anywhere. I haven't been able to perform in London for over 10 years. Why is that? Because of reputation? They'll just, yeah, they'll just say gangs. They'll say, um, what's the word they use all the time? Intelligence. Mm-hmm. So, and they threaten promoters, like, if you if you let them perform or we're going to take your license or we, we won't police your event. Like, they've done all kinds of things. Yeah, so they're just saying they basically get intelligence. There's going to be riots. There's going to be or, people with guns. Literally. You need to shut it down or else we'll take literally. your business off you. And then, so the last straw was literally that fight. And then after that, um, the chief inspector of the police messaged um, Live Nation. Because remember, when Live Nation, had, I got booked for wireless. Mm-hmm. So I was supposed to do the Rock Nation day. So it was me, Jay-Z, Rita Ora. We was all supposed to do that day. So after that happened, because this was like two weeks before wireless, my birthday party. So after that happened now, the police chief inspector has messaged the Live Nation guy saying we don't want him to perform. Literally. So 
it was just it was just like the last straw do you get me so you were going to perform a Rita or a it Jay-Z. was Jay-Z day yeah like main stage because the first time I'd done wireless I was on the little bandstand stage mm-hmm. and I pulled in a crazy crowd like everyone yeah. came over to see me kind of thing and then obviously the next time round they, they've moved me up and then obviously the How police did that affect you? It's just disheartening. You get nicked for something you don't do. They're stopping you there. They're stopping your shows constantly. Then you're getting nicked again. Then they're stopping wireless. It's just, it's disheartening. You're, yeah. you're out there grafting away, mm-hmm. trying to change your life around. And obviously they're not letting, man. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? It must be disheartening not to be playing in front of tens of thousands of people. Yeah. With some of the biggest artists Hundred the world. Yeah, then, yeah. Does that make you want to quit? Or does it, it make it you just... It did, it did at a time, yeah. I, I just... I didn't even, there was a stage where I didn't even like what music came with anymore or fame or like, I just lost love for a little while. Like, but I, I love being creative, but I just didn't like the other stuff it comes with. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the dark stuff. Yeah. How was it in the business side of things like being signed with a record label? Did they tell you what music to release or have you got? Yeah, to an extent. Obviously, <clears throat> if I was, if I was a hundred percent like, Nah, I don't, I'm not doing it. I don't feel it. There's not really much they could do about it. But um, like, for instance, the Rio Aura song, I didn't really like the beat and I didn't like the message. And I didn't, not that I didn't like the message, but the message didn't relate to me. I'm, do you get me? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm known to be a gangster rapper. I've just come out of prison for all of this stuff. I get where they was going with it because they're trying to clean up my image yeah. and stuff, but the song wasn't me. So, but then when you've got radio, You've got the label, you've got the, everyone saying to you, it's the one, this is the song. Mm-hmm. So you're like, all right, cool. I'm going to yeah. do it. I'll run with it, innit? To hit mainstream. Do you take, do you listen well or do you, is it fuck you kind of mentality? Because every rapper I speak to is kind of, they're stubborn bastards. Yeah, no, nah, I, 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 I am stubborn within my own right for sure. But like, I don't know, I, I'll still listen to people and take advice where, where I feel like it's needed. Yeah, because I've seen uh, Big Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest boxers on the planet. I yeah, yeah. The biggest um, was training towards training to listen to one of your yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah. He's been posting my songs yeah. like all the time, man. How's that make you feel? Yeah, that's sick, bro. I love that, man. Do you doubt yeah, yourself he... though? That so you must like the ability you've got to then change the game and leave the blueprint for other rappers to come through. It's like you get to a certain level, but when you're just about to break through again, something knocks you down. Yeah, yeah. You I've that? had that every time, isn't it? Yeah. Literally, every time I every time I've dropped an album, I've been in prison. <laughs> literally every time I've dropped an album I've been in prison and it just happened with this last one I'm about to release now same situation mm-hmm. what was the situation with us? ah oh, bro basically I've been recording this album in a studio with an engineer um, the engineer has a girlfriend and it's in this other guy's property so but they're all doing music together I've now come and I'm recording with this engineer Halfway, finishing, I've been in there like three months recording. It's the engineer, the engineer pays rent. He lives there. It's his equipment. Anyway, so it comes out that the guy has been fucking the engineer's girlfriend. So now the engineer doesn't want nothing to do with the girl and the guy. So all of a sudden, the guy have lock, has locked the studio door and saying that um, we can't get our stuff. And he basically wants money for the stuff. So obviously... We've gone up there, got the stuff, and then one thing led to another. He's ended up getting bashed up on the way out, but, and he's trying to say it was man, and he's snitching basically. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you're on tag for now? Yeah, literally. I've been. I went. I done five months on remand. While I was in there, I lost my friend. He got shot in the head. Um, come out, got bail. I had to put twenty five up and get tag in it. So obviously, I was happy to do that. But like it's been like another fourteenth month and no, still Fuck no sign sick, of trial. Man. Every time you get the, every time you release <laughs> yeah. an album, somebody's murdered and you get the jail. It's crazy. And you better stop releasing albums, bro. <laughs> just, uh, and just, just release singles, singles or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. I was talking to that. I was talking to that with my brothers the other day. I was like, Do you know what, bro? Do you know you see this this whole the, the term I am perfect? It's like it's been a little shackle around my yeah. legs. I can't wait to just get it out and just move on to the yeah. next stuff. You know. How many I mean? albums have you released? I haven't actually, well, I, I released um, Pure Coke Volume yeah. 1, 2, 3, and 4. One was a mixtape, two was an album, three was a mixtape, yeah. four was like an album. So but this is your first This is like my first debut album, album. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you excited for it? Are you yeah, scared? Yeah, I'm, defi- I'm definitely excited. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say scared. 
I'm like, I'm, I'm eager to just see what people feel about it. But I've literally had this music for over a, 10 years, over a year. No, I, 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 it's changed up. Yeah. Or? Yeah. The, the name of that yeah. the album has been over 10 years, but this music I've had for like two years now, mm -hmm. ready to go. And then obviously because of the circumstances and situations I've been going through, I haven't been able to release the music. You know so you still got a lot of love on social media and stuff. Every time you pop, yeah, drop yeah. something, it still pops. Yeah. yeah. Now come on, man. So I, I literally laid the footprint for the music scene there's no doubt about it in on street rap and gangster rap or whatever you want to call it in the uk i'm definitely one of the guys that mm -hmm. that that started it and laid footsteps for everyone else to follow so how do you change your strategies then to drop an album keep the head straight don't let the trauma affect you yeah you just i just keep going bro that's, yeah. that's all i can do is keep going isn't it i'm, I'm literally back in the space where I, I love music again like i love creating and and for me i when i lost that I didn't want to do music no more. So it's because I'm 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 not creative. I can't even go into the studio and write, or I'm overthinking everything. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it took me a little while to get back in that space to fall back in love with music again yeah. for me to be able to. Have you ever spoke to anybody about the trauma of the past? Yeah, I've done counselling a couple of times. My trauma leads back to when I was a child. You get me? What happened? Nah, just like um, single parent. Um, mum was a user at, at a time um, found out my dad wasn't my dad when I was like 17, 18 um, just, just all kinds of stuff I've literally just felt alone for most of my life and because of that I literally have built a defence mechanism where I'm inside myself and I don't let nobody in and I don't let nobody hurt me and, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's affected relationships that's affected how how I progress and move forward in yeah. life, do you know what I'm saying? Without you, you'll use that pain of the past of through violence. Yeah, and, and also that too. Through rap. Yeah, and so that too for rap sure. Use the rap's going to change your life for the better. Yeah, that's yeah. Therapy for you. The violence as well is going to change your life for the worse, but that's also therapy for yeah, you. Yeah, which literally. Is nuts. Like, yeah. You tend to see like, every bad man I know or everybody that's had a life for violence. I've got a fucked up past and you tell me your story now I didn't know half that shit mm. that's a book that's a film yeah yeah that's I'm, I'm literally yeah yeah you need the success story to complete it literally that's that's no. what it is that's so what I'm then, working on now do you no get me so you've got so many opportunities there to people can get a better understanding of your life at a minute he's fucked up for this reason yeah he's yeah he's lost family members to murder he's found out all this shit when he's 18 he's yeah, in yeah. prison but then what happens is you put all that shit into lyrics yeah, yeah. smash out an album take over the album then you've got opportunities then literally to then I, help save music others. has been therapy therapy yeah. for me if you listen to my lyrics i talk Some about pain shit. like yeah, yeah it's pain and stuff that i'm going through it's just it's, a, it's stuff that i probably couldn't even sit down and have a conversation with certain people but yeah. within music i'm able to express it in a certain way do you know what i'm saying how is it the industry when you're flying high and everybody's want a piece of you it, it feels good, but I'm at a stage where I know it's not real. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I went at those times there where I grew up. I grew up, not that nobody didn't care about me, but I, no one didn't worry about me or care what I was doing. And then, then you get into a stage where everyone's on you. So at that time, you actually, you're, you're, you're like, yeah, this is cool. I like this. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And then... Getting but, used though. Yeah, for sure. Getting yeah. used. Getting used and all of that. You know Were saying? you drinking heavy, taking drugs back in the yeah, day? Yeah, yeah, done, I've done many things. I used to, we used to, like, where, but where we grew up with gangbanging and we grew up in, like, a, a black area, the majority of the people I got problems with are black boys, do you know what I'm saying? So, as white boys, we was able to go to, like, drum and bass raves to get away from the fuckery, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we'd be in there popping pills. We used to do that, like, weekends and that when we was younger, do you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. our little getaway and that. How many times do you think you've been shot at? <laughs> uncountable I've been shot at bare times like where where I live and grew up uh, like you can go and check it out it's everyone it's normal do you get what I'm saying like mm. it's proper normal where I come from yeah yeah does that affect you though it's yeah of course I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I'm paranoid everywhere I go I'm mm -hmm. I'm wary I, and I don't have to be majority of the time because everybody loves man do you get what I'm saying yeah. but because of that I'm still on my toes always I'm still Guarded. Guarded, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I think I, you've I'm, always got to be on your toes, though. Yeah, I have to. But I'm like, I, I think like 10 steps ahead all the time. Like who, what, when, why, before I make any moves, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I process everything mm -hmm. before I function because I have to. Yeah, but it's not as if you've not got the talent there as well. Like the talent's there. The talent's there. So do you then become 
not a threat for people, but you become then a potential hazard that I want to work with him, but every time I read about him, somebody's dead or he's doing a sentence. A hundred percent. People are scared to work with me, for sure. Like, <laughs> uh, in terms of the industry and, and stuff like that. And it's been like that since I started, and yeah. it is still like that to an extent. I've just, I'm not even that bad, or but it's just trying to, the image and the stuff that comes with everything, I'm just now trying to clean it all up and, and yeah. show people that I'm just a normal person. That normal takes person. time though. And no, you will show sure. people when you start getting results. Like if you start hitting top tens and, and stuff like that, then people want to, everybody wants to work with numbers. No, no, 100%. You know, I mean? you know how the yeah, game works. Yeah, you yeah, fucking yeah. hurt them, the numbers for years, many 100%. years, the last 10 years anyway. So how do you clean that image up then? How do you become, see the world differently? How do you st step back from everything you get dragged into? Like like I said, I'm I'm getting older now. I've been through so much in my life where I'm I'm I've been able to sit down now and assess my life. Um, obviously, I've I found love with my misses and stuff, which I wasn't even able to, which I fucked up a lot of the time. Do you get me? Because of these traumas, but with that has allowed me now to to understand why I act and do things the way I do it. Now I assess myself different and and. I'm aware of the, the choices and decisions I make now. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Everything you do in your life is down to yourself. What yeah, you want literally. to choose, what path you want to choose. And if you've met the love of your life, then what happens is you become more vulnerable. Yeah. Instead of having guards up all the time, if yeah, you're yeah. finding out your dad's not your dad, if you're seeing people get murdered, then you're thinking, I just need to wrap myself around in a bubble and just, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to fucking let anybody yeah, in. Yeah, and I, and I did I mean. that for years, yeah. literally. Well. You see, you're becoming, you're changing the way you, you're seeing life then. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm definitely got a way more positive outlook on life now. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm a family man now. Yeah, yeah. misses kids, and I'm just trying to focus on doing music and and, and getting out of yeah. it. Yeah. And when do you think you're going to be getting sentenced for your tag? Or is that going to be getting? Cut uh, off I don't or even what? know. I don't know what's happening right now. Um, I've been waiting. I've been what? It's been over twelve months, fourteen months. I've been on tag five months inside on demand. Still no clue of what's going to happen yet. And then your album drops when? My album drops next month. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> At least I'll be out for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Touch wood. What's the album about? Um, this one is, this one, um, because I had it more before, it's more got the street element in it. Do you get me? And it's it, I ain't perfect. It originates from coming from the streets, so it is more got the street elements in it. But obviously, like I've proper grown up now, and like so, my music's a little bit different. I'm I'm grown with it, maturing a bit. Yeah, yeah. So this is you want to get this album out as kind of closure of the past to flip the chapter. Um, yeah, I, I flipped the chapter already, but musically, yeah, you're right. Still, yeah. Who would yeah. you love to work with? Um, there's loads of people, man. I'd love to work with Ed Sheeran. Sick, sick. I like him still. Yeah. yeah. And what other rappers, any? Um, I like everyone, man. I like everyone that's doing their stuff. Um, who could I say? I like gigs. I like um, I like Getz. I like Rich. Old school. Um, yeah. They, these guys, they came up in my era, so I, yeah, I got yeah, a yeah. different respect for them, mm -hmm. do you know? Yeah. But I like the new kids too. I like Digga D. I like, there's loads of them, man. I like, mm -hmm. I like enough of the kids coming. How is that? And is that a very small industry, the rap game? Um, Especially in the UK. It's not as big as America. Yeah. Yeah, it is small. Everyone knows everyone to an extent mm -hmm. or, or like, obviously the streets are related to the streets, mm -hmm. so. What about the kind of grime stuff from when you see people <laughs> calling out would you what would you put what label would you say you were in i'm definitely not grime grime's mm. like I'd, i wouldn't even put me in a label i just yeah. i make music i'm an artist mm -hmm. you get me just do what you want yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i don't have you can't put me in a box yeah. i could touch any kind of beat any kind of concept emotion and it's i'm all for it mm -hmm. you get me? what about going forward then for the future once this album drops I've literally got like three and a half albums sitting here now. So I'm probably going to let them all go this year. Yeah. Yeah, music nonstop. This is what everyone's been complaining about. They they say I've never been consistent. So I'm about Which to hit them with. It's a fair shout, isn't it? Yeah, no, nah, for sure yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure it is. No Tyson, excuses. You need to get Tyson Fury on one of your I songs. I want to walk him out when he beats up AJ. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't see why it wouldn't happen. He's a big no fan offense, of yourself. AJ, but you don't know. You know what the swag is right now. Yeah. You get me. <laughs> Who do you think will win that fight? AJ? No, I definitely think Tyson Fury will win. Yeah. I'm a Tyson Fury fan Same. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I just love the backstory of. And being fucked up on a child in the booze and coming back he's from done the his story is my story as well yeah. do you get me like the way he's gone down come up gone down come up that's that's been my yeah. story so i relate to him the most you yeah. know what i'm saying what do you think your favorite song you've released released so far is what you can relate to most my favorite song yeah. um i think turn back featuring maverick save is one of my best songs yeah 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 i i uh, it's, it's heartfelt like I still feel it now the fans still feel it now that's one of my best songs how's your circle now friends family um I've switched everything up a little bit more now um the, a lot of people I grew up with and and used to hang around are not really around as much anymore um I'm just trying to keep positive people around me man and people that are happy to see me do good and encourage me to do good you know yeah which is hard to find, though. Yeah, very hard to find. I, and I think maybe that's another reason why things didn't go so well for me in the beginning. I had a lot of bad people around me, a lot of negative people around me at the beginning, you know. So, Leeches. Yeah. How do you feel talking about your past and shit? Um, I'm kind of comfortable with it now. Like, it is what it is. I'm not ashamed of where I've come from or who I am. Mm -hmm. It's made me who I am today. Obviously, there's I, I've been through a lot in it. Like so, just think of the songs you can write. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? you know what I'm it's, saying? Real, it's real lyrics. But I'm not ashamed of who I am and where I come from. You, know? you can't be, but the only thing sometimes when you, if there's victims involved, that can play in your mind. That like, we've all got pasts. We yeah. all fuck up. We all make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't change it. But what we can do is learn from it. Hundred percent. And just kick on. And pff, 2021, it's just a new year. How do you feel with? lockdown and shit if you were to play gigs and that and no fans and I've, I've never been able to perform anyway <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying bro yeah. literally so it's bro it's fucking nothing new then no I do I'm yeah. just you get me I'm just it's just everything's just the same yeah. for me right now bro are you still getting hassle off the coppers um well yeah they've got me right now ain't they mm -hmm. they've got me right now for something they I, this just shouldn't even be this I, like it shouldn't you get me do you think you, they'll ever leave you alone though I'm hoping so. I, I have I have faith that they will. I, I'm 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 trying to do the right thing. I'm doing positive things. Is I'm not really involved in the streets as much as I used to be. Like not really at all anymore. So there's what? no reason for them to still trouble me. You know. Yeah. What's your daily routine like just now? Ah, uh, it's terrible, man. It's, there's nothing really going on in it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going trying to get fit in the gym and stuff. But obviously, all the gyms are closed now, so that's gone out the window. Yeah. You getting more music done though? Do yeah, yeah. I make I make music like almost every day, bro. Like I said, I've got three and a half albums sitting in there right now. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. I, I like in terms of create. Like I've been crazy in terms of creating right now, and I'm excited for everybody to hear what I've got coming yeah, up. Good. Cause you've got a song trending now on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. The Daily Duppy I yeah. just released. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Yeah, that's that was like my first drop. Obviously, I done the Coke Spiracy song, mm -hmm. talking about how I felt and what other people felt about the whole COVID situation and other stuff that's going on in the world. But um, this Daily Duppy was like my first, like I, I'm here now. This get my ball rolling in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How does that make you feel that you've got a song trending and you've just released? Yeah, no, it's sick. It's good stuff. Um, I just always expect more for myself, innit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What the most, the biggest. Yeah. That's the same, why not? You've yeah, got to yeah. fucking believe in yourself. Yeah. Who's in this album? Um, I got Dappy on there. <clears throat> I got Pagey Cakey, C Biz, Wiley, Gecko. Um, and and obviously my lot, Big French, Skeng, Vendor, Smalls, who recently passed. Rest That's in peace. a lot peace. of people. Yeah. How's Dappy getting on just now? Yeah, that's all right, man. Yeah. He's, he's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What about Wiley? Yeah, Wiley's good stuff as well. I like Wiley, man. He's always causing he's, shit. His energy's well, nuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's a nutter, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But I like Wiley. It's hard. When you see a lot of rappers who've been in the game, it's hard for them to maintain it, though. Yeah. To keep a high standard yeah, of yeah. smashing it out. Like. That's, that's why when I named the guys who I named earlier on, I have that level of respect for them because they've been around for as long as me. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. they're still here and they're still going. So you, you have to guys, take your hat off to that. Does he ask was 20 years in the game from mm -hmm. when he started off? Mm -hmm. He's kind of made their moves and it's, yeah. it's difficult like it is easy to make it but it's hard to maintain to maintain it for you know sure what I mean? yeah. what's your plans then for the album to drop where do you see it going 
Um, I just see it killing the place as usual, like like Pure Cult Volume One did. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like an old school band. It's, it's music, innit? I know, I know good music, and you can't deny good music regardless of whatever the situation is. And why and, do you and think, I know I make yeah, good music? Why do you think you've still got a strong fan base then, even though you have been inconsistent? Um, I just because you're unpredictability. I don't know about unpredictability. I think they're just the fans relate to me. I've always kept it a hundred. Like there's there's no cracks in in what I do and what I say and who I am. Do you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? The fans know exactly who I am and what I'm about. Yeah. And and I've always kept it a hundred. Like, and I think that's why they they still fuck with me now. Like. Yeah, because your social media is tight, man. Yeah. yeah, people, yeah. My, my fans like when I first started, my fans were like a cult. Like there's hundreds and hundreds of fans with my tattoo all over them. My, I've met people with my face on their legs. And, <laughs> serious, bro. That's like, fucking nuts. My lyrics all over their body. Like that's a, that's been a standard procedure for me from when I first started. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So mm. I've always had that kind of strong fan base. I've just never been able to to because of the trouble and the stuff I keep going through. I've never been able to keep it consistent, yeah. which is what I plan to do now. Do you know what I'm saying? What I say, mate, you mature, mate, age is a number. Yeah. As long as the content's there and it's banging, then people are going to support yeah, you. Yeah, regardless. No matter what. How does that make you feel? Is that one of the reasons why you want to keep doing what you're doing and try and make changes because of the loyal support that you've had yeah, over the years? Yeah, like literally, bro, I, I could show you my DMs, bro. I get messages like hundreds of fans every day like telling me how much I've helped them from either ending their life or getting through hard times just by listening to my music, like, that to me means more than anything. Do you know what mm, I'm saying? Yeah. That's what keeps me going. Like when I feel like I want to stop, a man's like, Coke, please, like, you get me? You can't leave us out here like that. So mm. do you know what I'm saying? It's for those guys, yeah. they keep man going. Have you thought about quitting many times? A hundred, yeah, loads of times. All, I, I, I think about it all the time, bro. <laughs> so, sometimes it's, sometimes it's just, uh, I, I've been in situations where I just, is it worth the hassle anymore? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But obviously my love for music and being creative has kept me here and, and wanting to do more. So Yeah. Do you think that's what keeps you sane though? Keeps you kinda from not being doing a life or in prison? Yeah. Is the love for your music? Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean it's Yeah, yeah I, music changed my life, there's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Like I I there's people that I know now that I grew up with that have not been able, uh, that are still the same the uh, way they are when we was kids, do you know what I'm saying? Because they haven't been able to go out and see anything different. So all they know is the same, like, do you get what I'm saying? Like I grew up, when I grew up, I didn't see outside of Stonebridge. I didn't. And it's only when I found music, I was able to go to other places and see different things to show me that the world's bigger than Stonebridge. Do you know what I'm saying? The world, and and, Mm. and that kind of saved me. How does people from Stonebridge, how do they look at you now? Um, I'm, I, everyone I grew up with got love and respect for me yeah. and vice versa I'm my brothers are my brothers regardless mm-hmm. and yeah that's it how difficult is it to make changes this year is it do you still constantly battling yeah 100% I've I'm, I'm been just yeah every day is a battle man yeah yeah every day is a battle mm-hmm. what's the plans then for the future after this album I'm just gonna keep dropping albums yeah yeah that's, that's all I'm gonna do and you drop three albums. and a half now, are they all different? Yeah, yeah, they're all different. Yeah, they're all different, but they're all coke in the same right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, put your yeah. own spin it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mix it up like a that's, bit. I'm, I'm distinctive with how I talk, my accent, my tone, the things I talk about, the way I talk about it. So yeah. I always put my stamp on music. But you're going to drop them every three months or something? Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah? Yeah. That's three prison sentences coming. <laughs> 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 I'm done with. I'm, I'm done that. with prison. Now. Trust me, I'm done with prison now. That's that's it. How many jails you been in? Um, not that many. I've just been to like the same ones really. Um, I've been to Scrubs, One O, Chelmsford. That's where I just was recently. Four D Cat, and I think that's it. Scrubs, One O, Chelmsford, Ford. I think that's it. No demand. So no matter what you get done for, if it's a breach of the peace, you'll probably still get remanded. Yeah, I get remanded for everything, bro. Yeah, yeah literally. Is that not a fucking it's horrible. sore head? It's horrible. It's mm-hmm. horrible. Trust me. Because I see, I see other people get nicked for worse and they're out. 
and it's just like hi hi you like ah yeah. how's that even possible does anybody have inside ever say look man get your shit together yeah yeah all the time like Coke, what are you doing here i'm like what are you doing here yeah. do you get me but they're like you're not supposed to be in there i'm saying neither are you do you know what i'm saying <laughs> but i'm here in it yeah. what can i do mm-hmm. it's life what do you do the first day you get out did you think right i'm going to get into the music straight away or <sighs> first day i got out yeah, Some I was just, I just, want, nah, I, just, I just wanted to go and see yeah. my daughter and my missus, literally. How many kids you got? I got four. How many different mums? Four. <laughs> Crazy. I thought I was fucking bad, mate. <laughs> no wonder your head's fucked, mate. <laughs> Get into prison for a fucking break, aren't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, it's, it's stress. That is, mate. It's it's, you've got a chance to leave a legacy, mate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? With the talent that you've got. And what yeah. you've done for 10 years while head being fried, if you're to rein it in and screw the nut, it's scary how far you can go yeah. in the game. Do you know what I mean? No matter what you've done, the, st- the story's there. No, 100%. You know I, mean? I believe in myself. I know yeah. I can I can do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. I know that. I, I just got to... Like, and, and, and I have. I've got there now. I know where... Like, I know how to let certain things go now. Like... But do you know what I'm saying? Before where I jump at everything, now I'm I'm a little bit more reserved. I think about things. Is things worth it? Is you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, because every choice you make is down to you. Literally, and I know that, and I and I realise that now. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. I I don't have no one else to blame for for my thoughts. So. How old are you now? Thirty six. How old are you? I'm thirty five. Thirty five. Yeah. Thirty six. Me. Still plenty of time. Yeah, getting you know there. I mean? yeah. But I'm not trying to rap for a rival, so. Of course, man. So That's I just want to, I just want to kill it right now. Yeah. Why, and I'm in that zone right now where I've, I've got it. I know I've got it. I tear down anyone on the mic right now. Mm-hmm. I'm that confident. Because you do, do rap battles and shit with people. Nah, I don't do nah. rap battles. But if I jump in on a song with someone, I'm trying to beat you up on the record. Yeah. Yeah. Because who's, who would you? Look up to in America. How do you feel like Eminem, Nas? Do you look? Uh, to- yeah, I grew up on Eminem. He's yeah. like one of my favorite rappers. Fifty Cent, Nas, mm-hmm. like the, those are the guys I grew up on. Jada Kiss. Yeah. Like I literally, those guys made me want to rap. Mm-hmm. It's not that you look at all their stories and all they're all fucked up. Yeah, you know what I mean. Fifty <laughs> Cent's been shot, and fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he still killed. I actually read his book last year, and it was phenomenal. But he took over the rap game as well mm. and, but now he's into the entertainment industry and he's top of that reason yeah, being yeah. because he's working. He, he's ethic. a G I, I, I rate you know 50 I mean? cent highly yeah. and the game in that as well always mention him they've all been shot and they've got the story there but mm. they've obviously got laser focus for maybe two or three years yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean you've got the talent there but it's when you get there I don't know if it's a bit of self-sabotage kicks into play as probably. well probably do you know what I mean probably. where you think fuck it and, and then Self destroy yeah, it, yeah. take it it's all possible. down. It probably, it probably is self sabotage to an extent. I mean? Yeah, I've been self sabotaging for years. Yeah, my own worst enemy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's basically anybody that fucks up in life is down to the individual. Yeah, but as you know, an album's going to pop. You might think, fuck it, I'm just going to rip the whole ceiling down anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, um, but the gift is there, brother. It's just how far you want to take it, man. I hope this album fucking pops. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. Well. Regardless, anyway, yeah. I'm going to be killing them with music all year round. Yeah. So. Yeah. Has people been getting in touch to show, show support? Yeah, yeah. Um, since I um, dropped the the freestyle, everyone's been showing love, like mad support. A support that I, people ain't really shown before, so yeah. it's a good sign, isn't it? Do you know a, a song's going to blow? Do you it, feel it? Yeah. Do I, I kind of know when I've got one. Yeah? For sure, yeah. Sometimes you don't, but sometimes you do, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I know I've got a, I've got a couple... That's good to go. Are you going to go back on to Fire on the Booth? I'm probably going to do it, yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I, I was talking to Charlie the other day and he was telling me, yeah, he's, he's um, going to come back so we can get it in. I know the people have been waiting for that. They request mm-hmm. it all the time, so I'm going to do it for the fans, man. I don't see why, man. It's yeah. perfect time to do it. So we've yeah, got yeah. the album out. It's all about promotion. Yeah, and yeah. If you've got a video on there that's hitting 20 million views, that's next level stuff. Yeah, literally. You know what I mean? It just means there's more pressure on you, though, to try and... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't think that I'm ever going to be able to beat that moment. That moment was magic. It was just, it happened. I didn't think about it. And that's probably why it was like that. And I'm not really overthinking if I do it again. And I, I kind of know what I want to do for it. It's not like I'm sitting down writing for it. I've got stuff that I've done and, and put together already. And I think, all right, you know what? That might fit that nice and yeah. it'll be good for me. You know? So you've got the drive, you've got the power just now to try and 
make the best content you've ever made literally to then try and change I'm, your I'm life I'm in that now right now I'm in the zone where I'm just gathering content build, building everything up right I'm thinking about writing the book you know what I'm saying the documentary and, and getting that all going yeah. man you've got all that there man in abundance yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean but like, what you the need content's is, crazy you need the success story 100% do you know what I mean standing at the stage at the 100, end up 100% killing it fest on. please stand behind your head at the gym <laughs> 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 uh, you've got that you've got, you've got it there man yeah, yeah. I'm rooting for you brother I genuinely thank am thank you man, bro. I honestly, appreciate that mate, I am but you're still fucking crazy mate it's like still on tag but yet you've got an album released you've worked with the biggest names on the planet mm. it's like I don't know if I wouldn't say the coppers are not wanting to see so see they probably do but they probably get reasons why to come through your door they probably got reasons still why to jail even though I know you've seen no but even though they probably know so much that you've done in the past they just want you for something yeah probably you're right I, I'm, I'm, I was definitely <clears throat> not an angel growing up and I'm sure everyone knows that and I'm not, I'm not denying that fact but I genuinely have been trying to turn my life around mm -hmm. but we'll see innit finding it hard what trying to turn my yeah. life yeah of course like like I said, my, my friend died not too long ago, shot in the head and just like, it's just all those situations just pull you back to the streets, you know what I'm saying? And that's when you need to pull through. 100%. Because it's somebody else in a year, two years time, it's always going to be somebody. Mm. This isn't just London, this is everywhere. No, 100. You know what I mean? There's trauma and pain everywhere, that's how you react to it. 100. It's where your focus goes. That, you that's, what I'm, that's what I'm learning yeah. and, and getting a grip of now is how I react and deal yeah. with these situations, you because know? people might come up to you and poke and prod and say what you're going to do is a But it's up to you how you let it affect you, But again, yeah. It's like these are all tests from God, man. I believe. No facts. You know what I, mean? still... I believe that as well, like yeah. literally. So, and that, that's what I'm battling with now, mm. isn't it? Literally, just that. That's my biggest battle yeah. right now. It's learning to say no. Yeah. Just fucking no. I've got. I've got filming tomorrow. I've got. I'm in the studio. Nobody cares, mate. Yeah. About you. Nobody cares if you're lying doing five months, seven months from the man. The only ones no, there are probably your missus. Like, facts. Do you know what I mean? Facts. Handful of people. Nobody fucking cares. Big but facts. I tell you one thing: if you, when your album pops. All these leeches will pop back out, yeah. pretending to be your friend again. Yeah. All you need to just do is fuck off, man. Because yeah, yeah. it's a lonely journey. Did you find it lonely when you were rising up? Yeah. And then coming down again. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. Up? I've, I've, yeah. It's always, I've, I've felt alone for most of my life, to be honest. Obviously, I've had always had close friends and people around me, but like going through life, I've felt alone in it. Yeah. How are you yeah. feeling now? I'm feeling good. Yeah, yeah, yeah ready to fuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. For anybody that's maybe struggling in their own battles or demons, I know your music helps a lot of people. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give for them? Um, I would just keep strong, man. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, keep strong, man. Just you've got to persevere in it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, what's the date for the album? We give it a plug. Is it um, out yet? Is it's it going to be yet? late February. Right. No set date, but late mm -hmm. February, hundred million percent is there. And your social media for people who just come um, in. Yeah, in. you can follow me on Instagram at Coke USG, Facebook at Coke USG. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at K Get Coke involved, TV. Man, the guy's fucking talented. <laughs> Would you like to finish up on anything, brother? Um, nah, I'm, I'm, I can't think of nothing. Yeah, just look out for the album. I ain't yeah. perfect. And yeah, I'm here. I'm back yeah. in full effect. Good to see you, Thank brother. You, Listen, my brother. Mate, God appreciate bless you, and man. Learning for you, mate. Can't Big wait to love. see the album. Thank you, my brother. God bless. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.